Hey everyone, welcome to Archland. So we have here Marguerite. So kind of cute name, Marguerite. So at this point, we're going to be discussing her build guide. And we're starting off with her strength and weakness. So based on what we have here, um, less on less on the strengths. Only melee attack. Uh, so ma sorry, magic attack and magic defense. The rest, she is vulnerable to, um, you know, um, close-up damage, physical damage. So physical defense should be improved, and also for HP. Again, most mages are at the back, but but if they get blindsided, then they are easily to take out. So improve HP and defense for uh, her weakness. So moving on to her unique passive it's called beautiful soft flower okay i'm not looking at this i'm looking at a translation so increase damage dealt by two three four five percent for every buff on self to so take note of that she has to have a lot of buffs um buff on self max is 8 12 8 12 16 20 percent after using a skill there is a 15 20 25 20 25 percent chance to reduce its cooldown by one, two, three uh, turns for every buff on self, max 60, 80, 10, 100%. So the gist of this one is increase damage if there's a lot of buffs on her. And after using the skill, there is a chance for a skill cooldown, maximum of 25%. So that is actually um, the gist of her um translation here is a bit off so i'm reading a, off a trans another another translation but again this is a nice uh unique passive to have because the buff that she gives to herself increases her damage and has an increased chance to um to decrease cooldown of her skills which is very very interesting so off to her traits so we have here her traits. We'll start off with the top. So the top is this is going to be um, obviously I chose. Oops, <laughs> oops. Um, obviously I chose the top row. This is damage, damage and uh, AOE damage and heal. This one gives a big buff to one of your allies which is actually nice it's usually standard for some mages and the bottom why i didn't get the bottom is that this one is although this is good at uh, using an active skill uh, magic attack is plus 12 percent um this is actually also a risk for mages especially if their ranges are are short so if you depend too much on their active skill for damage, then they have to get up close and personal. For me, mages should be far apart, either dealing damage from far, far, far away, not far apart, far away, or giving out shenanigans like buffs. And, you know, I'll explain later what other shenanigans she has. But this one, this is nice, but this is a big risk to have on her. And the next one is going to be um, single attack um, to a target, and but a ally debuff removal. So those are her bottom skill, which is nice. Not really out, you know, out of this world. Nice to have, but I don't think you need it for her to be effective. That is why I ignore the bottom, you know. The bottom tree and went up with um, with the upper tree you will need this one the upper one this is nice to have damage and recovery of hp uh if you want to augment any hp recovery for your team and this one is also nice because if you're heavy on the heavies then you will need this definitely this is actually a nice skill to have this has critical rate so for if if you if you for example have another mage that needs critical rate, let's say for example Nola 
or an assassin that needs a high critical rate this one is going to really help that is why and this is i think the first buff that i've seen that increases critical rate for 20 percent that is why this is going to be effective so going towards the middle skill the um, it's called exploding moon but uh, it's quite uh, not clear in the translation here but um, this one this um, skill here is dealing 0.5 percent uh, magic attack damage to enemies uh, in range and share one random buff from self with allies within three tiles so whatever buff she has she can share one random buff from herself to allies within three tiles within around her for every damage uh, for every enemy damage by the skill increase the number of buffs shared with allies up to five buffs imagine that you're gonna be sharing buffs with your team with this one so this skill alone is actually very op although it's going to be a three turn cooldown but again this is going to be one of her best skills to have okay so what else what goodies do we have here so this one is a must equip um i'll tell you in a while she has two kinds of builds um you can actually with, with using the the top in the middle you know the middle row there are two types of builds later that i'd like to share with you this one is part of one build but the other one this one is teleport this one has teleport and share up to five buffs imagine that just five buffs she can share it automatically with that unit that you just you know flung somewhere else and they'll they'll be good so these two the teleport and the the buff the big buff go together in one build the other one the other build is this one and this one okay so this one stays because this one is going to be a passive that gives her a random buff at the end of act of her every action so going back to the summary so for her summary this is this is i think the skill that um yeah, this is the skill that is actually important to her as well. Attack the target dealing 1.5 magic attack damage from restore HP of the ally with the lowest HP by 0 0.8 magic attack. Before the battle, copy up to two random buffs from the target. Can't copy non-removable non buffs. So this one, this summary, you can see this, this in the tree. This summary trait and uh, this one is going to be one of your damage dealing buff sharing uh, buff copying build so that is the other build that she has so buff sharing damage dealing buff copying and the other one is going to be teleporting with a lot of buffs this one would be a bonus uh, if you decide to use this as a uh, recovery of HP and damage. But the two um, skills, this one, uh, the Exploding Moon, and um, in the summary, you have here uh, Dance of the Flock of Lights, which has a different name, of course. Um, it's going to be in one build. So Marguerite alone is very, very versatile depending on how you're going to play her whether again you're gonna play her with a teleportation the buffs the sharing with one or the damage dealing with a lot and the copying and sharing of buffs so those are the two types of builds for marguerite hope you guys got that um, i'm gonna be recapping it in a while so um again choose the top the top uh row it's much better because you will have more versatility versus the bottom row um the top row has two um types of builds the bottom in the middle has two types of builds for marguerite so again versatile and very good okay so off to rune so for your runes um 
clearly for for her you need a um skill cooldown so you'll need the R glass you need an R glass four piece R glass to reduce uh skill cooldown um i know she has a, a built-in one with her unique passive but she will need this as an additional chance to cool down her skills Okay, the other one is um, the two-piece set would be a magic attack of plus five. She needs that. Um, she does have a nice um, damage uh, built, um, nice damage mechanic with, built within her kit. But the five percent will not hurt. This will really, really go a long way. Okay, so this is her unique equipment. Is it going to be a must? So magic attack plus four, vitality plus four, which is HP. Margaret only effect each buff has a one percent chance of doing a critical critical hit up to four percent. So this adds um, up to four percent to her critical rate. A uh, rate at the end of the action after using the active skill. The duration of one random buff you have does not decrease. This one is going to be a game changer for you. If you have her um, her unique equipment, this is going to be nice. So is this a must have at this point? Yes, because this, sorry, excuse me. This one um, gives one buff, a, a, you know, an a infinite duration for her kit. So again, this is a very, very unique and nice to have equipment. So I would highly recommend that you go for this equipment. Okay, so to start off, your minions are attacking already without your permission. So let us um, rescue Charlotte here while we can rescue her. So she has a teleport, but in order for you to use her teleport, you must go forward. So this teleport can be used for offense and for defense. Take note of that. So as you, this one is going to be, um, this is one with uh, AOE damage and heal as well. So let us um, do this first. Let us uh, heal our compadres. And uh, there you go. Damage and heal. And they can survive another onslaught here. So after this one. Uh, Charlotte's still alive. You need to rescue her. Okay, so the next one is to go close enough and catch her and fling her as far as you can there you go so that is a rescue teleport you can actually do a attack teleport probably a key um key figure at the back and just to finish off this one for good measure again a nice attack so that is actually how she is so OP and uh, how I really like her kit. Versatile, yet um, has a clear, you know, has a clear uh, build whether you're going to be going on the AoE damage, um, the damage and sorry, the damage and sharing copy buffs or again, teleport and giving buffs so let's move over to my final thoughts and see what i think with marguerite okay so ultimately marguerite is at this point she could be the best mage in the bunch uh her damage can be off the charts um really off the charts at the same time she can provide a lot of support which is um, really um, rare for mages. So a support mage plus a heavy damage mage. And again, her two builds would be buff and teleport, which the first build is. 
And the, da the, the other one is damage, share buff, and copy buff. Those are the two builds that, that, that uh, when you choose the top row, can give you a lot of versatility and probably switch between what you need in terms of her build. Um, again, feel free to experiment on these two builds. For me, I haven't decided yet, but more or less, if you pick the top row, any of those builds will be fantastic for your team. Again, she is um, exciting to play, fun to play. Um, same with Catherine, her sister. But again, she is more, she actually is more OP than Catherine. Um, as long as you need, you need actually to, to time her teleport if you indeed want to use her teleport for offense. Um, for defense, not a problem. Just have to grab that specific ally. But again, it requires a lot of practice. I think I, I played with her kit for a while since she came out. But I'm still getting the hang of it. But again, she is cool, nice to have in your team and really good for offense and for support. So thank you very much, guys, for staying this far. So I hope this guide helped. And uh, comment down in the comment section what do you think of Marguerite's uh, build guide. So stay safe again. Take care. This is the Warden and I'm out of here.